Oda Nobunaga, first of Japan's three great unifiers, the Fool of Awari, and the Demon King of the Sixth Heaven. But what about the Nobunaga of Fate Grand Order? How well does she compare to her historical counterpart? And what grade would I give her depiction? Let's get into it. Nobunaga is both an Archer and Avenger class servant. Yes, I am going to cover both in this video. Let's start with Archer. Oda Nobunaga is famous for her use of firearms during the Sengoku Jidai. While Nobunaga was not the first daimyo to adopt their use, she was the one who first used them on a large scale, most famously at Nagashino. So Nobunaga getting the Archer class for her army's extensive use of ranged weapons does work. But in case that's not enough, Nobunaga did use a bow as well. This is most famously seen during the Honoji incident where, under assault from her treacherous general Akechi Mitsuhide, she took up a bow to shoot at the oncoming attackers. It was only after the bowstring broke that Nobu retreated into the temple, had it set ablaze, and committed seppuku. So Archer's a solid choice for Nobunaga, but what about Avenger? This one has more to do with the legends and popular perceptions of Nobunaga, but still connects to the real person. I'll dig more into this at a later point, but Nobunaga has developed something of an evil reputation. Still, this is a strange case for an Avenger, as Nobu is noticeably less driven by a desire for revenge, and this Nobunaga is the only Avenger released on the NA version of FGO who is not evil aligned, though this will soon change with the upcoming arrival of Ranmaru. Rather, Avenger Nobu is a being that fights against divinities in their hold over others, an enemy of the divine. In short, the classes that these two versions of Nobunaga get showcase different aspects of the character, with the Archer being more grounded in reality while the Avenger is based more upon Nobunaga's reputation. Next up is her character design, but before we can properly do that, it's time to get into the gender question. Nobunaga is the second character I have covered who has been gender flipped from their original source. So how does FGO handle this? Well, it isn't quite as strong of a case as it was for Fran. There was no alternate female version of Nobunaga. However, the writers clearly did put some thought into the case for making this gender swap and linking it to real history. Oda Nobunaga, particularly during his early years when he had the childhood name of Kiposhi, was known as being eccentric, unconventional, and prone to bizarre behavior. It was for this reason that Nobunaga would gain the nickname the Fool of Owari, Owari being the home province of the Oda clan. This led to fears among the Oda retainers that, once Nobu took over the clan, that he would lead it to ruin. Most famously, Nobunaga was said to have acted so disgracefully at the funeral of his father in 1551, and in his first years in charge of the clan that one of his tutors, Hirate Masahide, committed suicide in 1553, apparently to try to get Nobu to wise up. That's quite a way to scold someone, but it did end up having the intended effect. Even so, Nobunaga faced multiple challenges to his control of the clan. His older illegitimate brother Nobuhiro, the retainer Yamaguchi Noritsugu and his son, his uncle Nobutomo, and finally his younger brother Nobuyuki, also known as Nobukatsu. Quite the succession crisis, no? Nobunaga basically spent most of the first decade of his reign having to deal with all of this. It was only after the Battle of Okehazama in 1560, nine years after taking over the Oda clan, when Nobunaga would shake off his nickname of the Fool of Owari. After all, it is hard for people to keep calling you a fool when you lead an army of two to three thousand to victory in a devastating ambush against an army of twenty-five thousand, somewhere between eight and twelve times what Nobunaga had. Imagawa Yoshimoto was marching for Kyoto, and the Oda were thought of as little more than a speed bump along the way, but that speed bump would take Yoshimoto's life, his ambitions, and reduce his clan to impotence. Now what does all of this have to do with Nobu being gender flipped in FGO? Well, in the story of the servant Nobunaga, things had been changed so that Nobunaga had to deal with all of these challenges not just because of doubts about her wild nature, but also because she was a woman. In other words, it is adding an extra reason as to why Nobunaga had such a difficult time during her early years of trying to secure her reign over the Oda clan. It is certainly an interesting addition to Nobu's story, not a historically accurate one, but at least the developers tried to explain this gender flip rather than just doing it because reasons. Moving into Nobunaga's character design, though I am covering two separate servants in this video, the designers made my job a little easier. Archer Nobunaga is actually the second event server released in FGO, and so only has one outfit. Avenger Nobunaga does make up for this by having three very distinct ascension forms, but the first of these is almost exactly like her Archer Nobunaga form. Let's start there. Nobunaga's appearance in her Archer and First Avenger Ascension has her wearing something akin to a 20th century military uniform. Obviously the real Nobunaga didn't dress like this, but I have no problem with this. 
Why is that? Well, as I mentioned earlier, Nobunaga was known for being eccentric and unconventional, and also quite quick to adapt to new ideas or strategies. I'll say more about this when we get into her skill set, but Nobunaga's ability to adapt and try out new ideas, such as the muskets being introduced from Europe, would lead to devastating victories on the battlefield. I consider Nobu's more modern clothing and her FGO design to be symbolic of Nobunaga's tendency towards innovation and receptiveness to outside ideas. Even with this more modern look, though, the sigil or mon of the Oda clan is quite prominently displayed upon Nobunaga's hat. Moving into Nobunaga's other two ascension forms, we actually are getting more than we usually get from character ascensions here. The three ascensions of Avenger Nobunaga are basically three different versions of Nobunaga. The first ascension form, which is also similar to Archer Nobunaga, is what I am going to call normal or standard Nobunaga. I know, I'm really creative. This is the version of Nobu you see the most of, and is the one closest to the historical Nobunaga. The second ascension form is actually the younger version of Nobunaga, Oda Kiposhi. This is the Nobunaga that was widely considered to be an eccentric fool, and yet would prove such beliefs to be very, very wrong. This form of Nobu still bears a close resemblance to regular Nobu, with the changes being a shift in clothing and that massive ponytail. They also have the same fighting style as in the first ascension form, relying heavily upon muskets, swords, and that gatling minigun thing. Hey, Nobunaga did like guns. Avenger Nobunaga's third ascension is notably different, though, this being the concept of the Demon King Nobunaga. The popular image of Nobu is a cruel and menacing tyrant. I will have more to say about this whole Demon King bit later, but for now I'll just stick to design. This Demon King Nobu is notably taller, more mature looking, and has a more intimidating aura. She is literally standing atop a mountain of skulls. She also has a very different fighting style, being more heavy into physical combat and throwing out a bunch of beam attacks as well, a visual representation of how this Nobunaga is based more upon legend than reality. Nobunaga's sinister reputation is probably why she is dressed in red and black, regardless of what ascension form she is in. Overall, Nobunaga in FGO has a pretty interesting design that reveals multiple sides of the character, and while it doesn't match what the real Nobunaga would have worn, the spirit of Nobunaga being an unconventional and innovative daimyo very much is there. This is a solid design. Now we get to do skill sets for two different characters. This is actually a bit less troublesome than it sounds. Let's start with Archer Nobunaga. Her first skill is Strategy, increasing the MP gain of all allied servants for three turns. With the new Evocation Festival on JP, Archer Nobunaga got this skill upgraded to what is being tentatively called Nobunaga Tactics. Regardless, even the generic name we have now can still work. Nobunaga was a masterful strategist, both on the battlefield and in politics. Archer Nobu's second skill is Unifying the Nation by Force, which gives her a one-turn attack buff against divine enemies. This phrase, or Tenkafugu, is a cross between a motto and a seal that Nobunaga would place upon letters and other documents. It is, in effect, a declaration of Nobunaga's plan to unify the nation by force, and one that Nobu got very close to actually achieving. Still, I can't help but feel like a different name might have better suited a skill to get a bonus against divine enemies. That better name can be found on Nobunaga's third skill, Demon King, which gives Nobu Stargather Raid and Crit Strength for three turns. Now, what is this whole Demon King thing about? It comes up regularly in Nobunaga's dialogue in-game, and her Avenger's third ascension form is literally named Demon King Nobunaga. What's the story here? Well, as I mentioned earlier, Nobunaga has acquired something of an evil reputation over the years, thanks to a number of actions she took in life. The most notorious of these was the destruction of the Enryakuji Monastery atop Mount Hiei in 1571, just outside of Kyoto. Nobunaga surrounded the mountain, set the monastery ablaze, and killed everyone found within, somewhere between two and four thousand monks and civilians. The destruction of such a culturally significant monastery in a nation where Buddhism was and remains prominent produced significant outcry, and it serves as the prime example people bring up when the subject of Nobunaga's brutality comes up. Such tales, though, tend to leave out some key details. They don't say anything about how the warrior monks of Enryakuji, for centuries, had descended down from their mountain into the capital to impose their will upon the government, that the monks had given assistance to Nobunaga's enemies, or that they outright refused to negotiate with her. The destruction of Mount Hiei, though brutal, was the result of years of tensions between Nobunaga and the warrior monks, with the added context of the monastery having been a problem for the government in Kyoto for centuries prior to this incident. It is one of many examples of how history isn't something you can cleanly divide into oppressors and victims. Things tend to be more complicated than that, and the victims aren't always as innocent as they claim to be. 
Okay, so what about this Demon King bit? Well, this actually comes from letters exchanged between Oda Nobunaga and Takeda Shingen, who had joined the anti-Oda coalition in 1572. Shingen sent a letter to Nobunaga in 1573, declaring himself to be the protector of the Tendai monks that had fled from Enryakuji in such a way that Shingen seemed to be claiming divinity. Nobunaga, amused by this declaration, responded with a letter where he sarcastically signed his name as the Demon King of the Sixth Heaven, in effect declaring himself to be Shingen's polar opposite. This letter was later found by a Jesuit missionary, was taken as Nobunaga actually being serious, and the rest is history. Oh, and the Demon King of the Sixth Heaven being referenced to is Mara, the Buddhist equivalent of Satan who had tried to corrupt the Buddha during his journey towards enlightenment. Yes, that Mara, the darker half of the pseudo-servant Kama, and one of the halves of Beast Three. That's all for Archer Nobu skills. Now what about Avenger Nobu? Don't worry, there is much less for me to say here. When it comes to these two servants, Archer Nobu seems to have carried most of the weight when it comes to characterization. And so because of that, Avenger Nobunaga gets to be more abstract. Avenger Nobu's first skill is can't be helped, the concept of accepting unavoidable circumstances you hear so often in Japanese, and which Nobunaga is said to have used often in life, most famously at Honoji. As for the skill, it increasingly boosts Nobunaga's attack each turn for three turns, sets the battlefield to burning, but also slaps a burn debuff upon her. Directly related to this is the second skill, It Is But A Dream, which applies invincible and buff removal resist for a turn, as well as a special attack buff against enemies with the Heaven attribute while on a burning battlefield. As for the skill's name, this is another phrase attributed to Nobunaga, and it speaks to a concept, a mindset, that you can often find among the samurai. It is a detached sort of outlook that allows for acceptance of the existing situation, that life is but a dream that can end at any moment, and so one should not be too attached to it. This mindset promoted more aggressive behavior upon the field of battle among the samurai. Avenger Nobu's third skill is Demon King of the Sixth Heaven, which gives critical stars per turn for three turns as well as an MP charge. I already explained the meaning behind this, so I won't do so again. But something that is worth noting is that in the upcoming Gura Gura 6 event on NA, this skill will get an upgrade that will increase the MP charge at level 10 from 20 to 30%, as well as a buster damage buff for 3 turns while on a burning battlefield. This upgrade will transform Avenger Nobunaga into one of the strongest buster loopers in the entire game, and one that can work with double coin Skya and Oberon with a 50% CE. I, for one, am looking forward to it. Archer Nobunaga's Noble Phantasm is Three-Line Formation, which is a powerful AoE attack that does heavy damage to any enemies with the Riding skill. In terms of lore relevance, this MP is absolutely brilliant. The Three-Line Formation is referring to the formation Nobunaga used at the Battle of Nagashino in 1575 against the Takeda Clan. Takeda Shingen had died shortly after receiving Nobu's Demon King letter, leading to his less capable son Katsuyori taking over. At Nagashino, Katsuyori decided to attack the combined Oda-Tokugawa army despite being at a heavy disadvantage. He put his faith in the Takeda cavalry, considered the finest horsemen in Japan, but it was at Nagashino that the Takeda horsemen would come up against the cold, innovative brutality of Oda Nobunaga. To fight off the cavalry charge, Nobunaga set up her 3,000 aquabus gunners behind bamboo palisades and instructed them to fire in volleys, three lines with one line at a time firing their guns while the others reloaded. The result was absolutely devastating. The Takeda cavalry were broken and would never recover. Nobunaga's use of firearms in this way is a prime example of her genius. Europeans may have introduced guns to Japan, but European armies wouldn't see widespread use of tactics like this for several more decades. Avenger Nobunaga's Noble Phantasm is Papias Reborn, Demon King of the Myriad Heavens, which is another massive AoE attack where Nobu unleashes a massive torrent of fire upon a burning battlefield. This is Nobunaga unleashing everything about her sinister reputation as the Demon King to, for a brief moment, become an actual Demon King. Papias, in the MP name by the way, is just another name for Mara, and so this MP is connected to Nobu's whole Demon King reputation I discussed earlier. When it comes to the skill sets and MPs of these two versions of Nobu, you can characterize them as Archer Nobunaga being closer to the historical Nobunaga, with abilities that are closely tied to the real person. Meanwhile, Avenger Nobunaga's skill set leans more into the Demon King reputation, as well as lighting everything on fire. 
Fire, of course, is closely associated with Nobunaga's final moments at the Honoji Temple. You could say that Avenger Nobu's whole style of attack is to bring her enemies to a recreation of that burning temple, incinerating everything within, including Nobunaga herself thanks to that burn debuff she gets from her first skill. In other words, Archer Nobunaga is the person, while Avenger Nobunaga is the legend. Moving on to craft essences, Archer Nobunaga's craft essence is Rotary Matchlock, depicting a matchlock firearm on a fancy display. The CE's text gives us more context, talking about, again, the Battle of Nagashino, and how the use of firearms there against the Takeda cavalry changed war in Japan forever. I already talked about the actual events of the battle, but this CE talks more about its impact, about how prior to the battle, Japan hadn't quite figured out how to best use firearms in battle, and not everyone was convinced of their value. After Nagashino, nobody could deny the effectiveness of muskets, not after seeing what it had done to the Takeda clan. I do kinda wish that the MP and CE both didn't connect to Nagashino, but at the same time, Nagashino was such a game changer that I understand why they did it. Oda Nobunaga might have won her first fame at Okazama, but it was at Nagashino that it was sealed. Avenger Nobunaga CE, and the first Bond CE I actually have among the servants I have covered, is Beyond Oblivion, depicting a burning sword planted in the smoldering ground. The text here describes this sword as being an amalgamation of Nobunaga's many swords throughout her life, much like how Avenger Nobu is an amalgamation of three different versions of Nobunaga. Naturally, Nobu decides to call this combined blade the Demon King Sword, leaning into the comedy that Nobu so often brings in FGO. But speaking of comedy, it is now time to get into Nobunaga's characterization. Now, not only is Nobunaga the first non-European servant I have covered, she is also one of the main characters of the Gura Gura cast of servants, events that largely are comedic and frequently break the fourth wall. This presents something of a challenge when it comes to characterization, since most of Nobu's appearances in FGO take place in comedy content that is not meant to be taken seriously. If you look past the comedy bits, though, you can piece together how FGO has decided to characterize Oda Nobunaga. The strategic genius is very much present. Whenever you come across a difficult battle situation during the Gura Gura events, chances are Nobunaga is either creating the plan to deal with it or has significant input. She is also haughty, has pretty high self-esteem, and tends to react harshly whenever she feels insulted or disrespected. Mostly this is played for comedy due to the nature of the events, but when Nobu appears in more serious content, looking down upon her is a quick way to get yourself killed. Yet Nobu does have a soft spot for family members and those who have served her loyally in the past. You see this with Nobukatsu, with Nobu being hesitant to punish her younger brother when he stirs up trouble. This is consistent with the historical record. Nobunaga pardoned most of the people who challenged her power during her first years as head of the Oda clan, with some, like Shibata Katsuye, going on to serve Nobunaga loyally for the rest of her life. It was only after, having already been pardoned, that Nobukatsu started scheming again that Nobu had him killed. You also see this with Morei Nagayoshi, upon finding out that it is Nagayoshi attacking the castle early in Gura Gura 4, that Nobu destroys the armor that had been controlling Nagayoshi, and persuades Kaldea to recruit him. Despite Nagayoshi being a homicidal maniac, Nobu won't turn her back on someone who had served her so loyally in life. But if you want to see a story where Nobu is not being played as a joke character, the manga Fate Type Redline is a solid example. This story is still a work in progress, and so how it will play out remains to be seen. It tells the story of a different Holy Grail War set in Tokyo during the closing days of World War II. With Japan on the brink of defeat in the war, a faction in the military is trying to win the Holy Grail to turn things around. The Nobunaga we see in this story is notably more ruthless and bloodthirsty than her FGO counterpart, and yet still consistent with her depiction in Gura Gura events. Upon being summoned, she observes the state of the world, finding herself both disgusted by how far Japan has fallen, but also seeing opportunity, seemingly intent on creating a new empire in the modern world. Nobu is a deadly combatant, relying upon both overwhelming firepower but also trickery to deceive her foes, which very nearly gets Okita killed in their first encounter. Also as an FGO, Nobunaga isn't exactly fond of people looking down upon her. When Nobu was initially summoned, her master expressed dismay upon finding out that Nobunaga was a woman. Nobunaga's response to this was entirely predictable, and her next master would not be so foolish. Yet, despite this more brutal portrayal, we still see traces of Nobunaga's softer side. Her choice of master is the character who is the most subject to the mistreatment of others, and while her master's abuse continues, people have to do such things only when they know that Nobu is not around, since doing that around Nobu is likely to be fatal. 
Also, once she realizes that the berserker in the war is none other than Mori Nagayoshi, Nobunaga turns and walks away, refusing to fight against both a former ally and the older brother of Ranmaru. This more serious version of Nobunaga in Fate Type Redline is brutal, cunning, and ruthless, but also loyal to those who fought beside her in life. I look forward to seeing how this story develops in the future. So where does that leave us when it comes to Nobu's characterization? Well, it is largely good. The Nobu of FGO doesn't hide the fact that she is ambitious, actively leans into her sinister reputation, and absolutely will shoot you if you piss her off. At the same time, she remains an unconventional strategic genius who, despite her ambitions, has a loyal and forgiving side when it comes to family and those who have served her. If I have to say anything negative about Nobu's depiction in FGO, it's that her darker aspects are toned down a bit. This probably has more to do with the nature of the events she features in, but the Nobunaga of FGO does seem like a nicer person than her historical counterpart. Fate-type Redline, though, shows just how menacing and bloodthirsty Nobu can be, though since that story remains ongoing, we will have to see how it develops. And now for the verdict. What grade would I give Oda Nobunaga's depiction in Fate Grand Order? Well, as a whole, it is pretty good. Her character design, skill sets, and MPs are absolutely solid from a lore perspective, though still with some creative license being taken. Nobu's gender flip isn't as easy to justify, but the designers at least leaned into Nobu's real history to explain the extra challenges that she would have faced historically because of this. As for characterization, while most of her screen time is found in comedic circumstances, you get enough traces of the real Nobunaga here that the character is still recognizable. The sheer volume of references to bits of Japanese history found throughout the Gura Gura events, as well as Nobu's depiction in Fate Type Redline, tells me that if she moved into a serious FGO storyline, they could probably pull it off without drastically changing the character. And so for a final grade, I am going to give Oda Nobunaga, Demon King of the Sixth Heaven, a B. It's not a bad depiction once you dig underneath all the comedy and shenanigans, but I do hope that someday we get an actual serious storyline for Nobunaga in FGO, if only to show people what this largely comedic character is truly capable of. And if you would like to learn more about another character with links to the demonic, check out my video on Mephistopheles here. Until next time.